Welcome back, everyone. Today, we'll be taking a look at two of Hans Niemann's games from the United States Chess Championship in rounds number four and five. Now, I would have loved to have done a recap after the fourth round yesterday, but unfortunately, I was on the road traveling to Austin, Texas to record a podcast. As such, we'll take a look at Hans's games in round number four and round number five in our recap today. So the game starts off with D4 here by Hans. Fabiano plays Knight to F6. We get C4, E6, and now we get Knight to C3 and Bishop B4. Now this is a standard Nimzo Indian defense. White has a choice of many options here. You can play E3, F3, Queen C2, Knight F3 or A3, even I think Bishop G5 or G3, which was of course played in the famous game in the Sinkfield Cup between Magnus and Hans. At any rate, we get Queen C2 from Hans. Castles is played by Fabiano, pawn to a3 here, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, and now d5. And here Hans plays bishop g5, and Fabiano plays h6. Now, in the candidates tournament, I played this move d takes c4 here, which is a slight inaccuracy. h6 is a little bit more precise, and Fabiano actually played this in the Olympiad in the last round against Hare Krishna from India, so it is somewhat known at this point. We get bishop takes knight. Queen takes bishop, knight to f3, d takes c4, queen takes c4, knight c6, all very standard. And here we get queen c3 from Hans. Now, in the aforementioned game from the Olympiad between Hare Krishna and Fabiano, e3 was played, and after e5, the game ended in a quick draw with d5, e4, queen takes e4, queen takes b2, rook d1, and after queen c3, we had rook d2, queen c1, rook d1, queen c3, rook d2, queen c1, rook d1, and queen c3 with a repetition. Hans, obviously not interested in making a quick draw, plays queen to c3 here, and now we get rook to e8, rook to d1 is played, and now we get this move e5, offering a trade in the center, rook on e8, of course, guarding the pawn on e5. Pawn to d5 is played, knight to b8, we get e3 here, and Fabiano chooses to deviate. He plays this interesting move, bishop f5. Now, in the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz in 2021, yours truly, myself, Hikaru Nakamura, I played this move, bishop to g4 against Sam Shanklin, and the game was hard fought. It ended in a draw, uh, but it was a very interesting game, very theoretical. It goes on after castles takes, takes e4, queen c7, takes, 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 rookie one, queen b2. And eventually, the game would end in a draw. Now, it's worth noting that in his post-game interview, Fabiano did allude to this game. But I think he avoided playing this variation very specifically because it's very forcing. You don't really get any winning chances. And both sides are most likely going to have to be very precise. And it will peter out into a draw. So therefore, Fabiano decides to play bishop f5 here. And now we get bishop to e2, knight to d7, and here are Hans castles. Now, for players who are a little bit newer, you might notice there's a pawn that looks like it's hanging on c7. Now, this would actually be a very big blunder because after queen takes c7, black can now play rook a to c8. And if white plays this move, queen to b7 here, now black goes rook c2, preventing white from castling. If white castles, you would lose the bishop. And so therefore, white doesn't really have uh, any very good moves in this position, and it should should be close to winning. Um, or wait, sorry, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe actually, no, sorry, it's the other rook. It, sorry, I'm wrong. It's actually the other rook in this line because after after queen takes b7 here, now you can play this move knight c5, and after queen to b5, you go rook a to b8, and you win the pawn on b2. So sorry about that slight mistake. It is what it is at any rate. Um, so after queen c7, rook c8, white can also play this move queen to a5 here. But after queen to a5, now black goes rook to c2, targeting the bishop and preventing white from castling. And now white has a lot of problems here. If you play a move like queen b4 to guard the pawn on b2, black can go pawn to a5 here. And after a move like queen takes b7, black goes rook to b8, queen a7, and rook b takes b2. You have the double stack on the seventh rank. White cannot castle, and the position is completely falling apart. So as such, you don't really want to grab this pawn, even though it looks very tempting. So Hans castles here. We get rook a c8, now guarding the pawn, because, for example, say I play a random waiting move like king h8. Now after queen takes c7, rook e c8, I can probably take on b7, but even after queen a5, rook c2, you'll notice that white has castled the king here. So now white can very calmly play a move like rook fe1, and after rook takes b2, white can play a move like rook c1, and with the control of the c file, white should be clearly better here. So Fabiano plays rook a c8, and now Hans plays this interesting move pawn to a4. Now, in his post-mortem after the game, when Fabiano was interviewed, he did mention this bishop b5 line. He gave a lot of different sequences of possible variations, but I think the simplest one for black to play here would be a6. 
And after bishop takes d7, bishop takes d7, white goes knight to d2, with the idea of playing knight e4 and knight c5 to fork the bishop on d7, and the pawn on b7. And here, after bishop to b5, rook e1, e4, white can trade the queens, and black's pawn structure is a little bit compromised, but this very nice bishop on b5, which can go to d3, combined with a slightly weak pawn on d5 here. Black should be completely fine. I don't think black can probably win this position, but black should be able to draw it pretty comfortably. So instead, Hans plays this move a4. Fabiano plays this move c6. Very logical move here, trying to open up the c file for the rook. If pawn takes rook takes is played here after a move like queen to a3, for example, black can just go rook c8 and with complete control of the c file, it's still probably only equal, but black has no problems at all. Instead, d6 is played here by Hans. Now, this is a very committal move because white has a pass pawn here, which is protected by the rook. But the knight is blockading the pawn. Now, one of the general principles in the game of chess is that if, if there is a passed pawn on the board, if you can blockade it with a knight, generally that's the best piece to blockade it with. So this knight on d7 is very good because it prevents the pawn from advancing further. Additionally, however, this pawn could become quite weak and vulnerable after a move like rook e6 targeting, targeting the pawn on d6. So it's a very double-edged move here. It's either going to turn out to be very good or very bad. So we get rook c to d8 played here by Fabiano, trying to move the knight and probably win the pawn on d6. We get pawn to a5 played here by Hans. Now it's worth noting that a5 is oddly enough not the best move. The computer actually likes this very strange idea with queen a5. And after pawn to a6 here, it thinks that after b4, white is probably doing well. Again, it's not something that I understand. I'm not going to pretend to understand it, but that is what the computer recommends. Instead, we got pawn to a5 here, which also makes a lot of sense because white has the idea to play a6, undermining black's pawn structure with the pawns on b7 and c6. So if I play a random move like king to h8 after a6, once you take, I take the pawn on c6, and it's still even material here, but you have the double pawns on a7 and a6 which are incredibly weak. Instead, after a5, Fabiano plays bishop g4, trying to take advantage of this potential pin with moves like e4. Now here, Hans plays a surprising move. He plays pawn to h3. Now, it would be interesting to know exactly why Hans rejected playing this move queen b4. It is a very logical move here because you attack both the pawn on b7 as well as the bishop on g4. Um, of course, Hans did not do an interview after the game because he, he lost, and I'm sure he was not in a good mood. Um, but it would have been interesting to find out why he didn't do this. Because after queen b4, probably the best that black has here is to play e4, preventing white from capturing the bishop. And after knight to d4, bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, pawn to b6. Black is probably okay here, but after knight g3, this pawn is still very nice on d6. And black has some like, slight weaknesses with the weak pawn on e4 and potentially a weak pawn on c6, or even ideas like let's just say I go queen e6, maybe even ideas like rook a1 to infiltrate on the a file here. In this specific position, it doesn't work, but it fills a touch loose. So it would be interesting to find out why Hans did not play queen b4. Perhaps he thought there might have been some tactic with e4, knight d4, and c5 with a fork, but after queen takes b7, c takes d4, bishop g4, white is simply much better here, if not winning. Uh, maybe maybe he thought there was knight e5 here targeting the bishop and if something like bishop h3 maybe black can go d3 perhaps he saw a line like this which would make some sense um but he still should have played queen b4 instead he plays h3 and now after bishop takes f3 it's a very tough situation here because hans has to decide whether to capture with the bishop or with the pawn now for anybody who's looking at the position on first land you would think well why would you take with a pawn you're just doubling these pawns in f2 and f3 that can't make any sense Interestingly enough, this is the best move. And the reason it's the best move is because if you take with the bishop here, black can now play pawn to e4. And you will notice that here, the queens are going to be coming off the board. And say you play a move like bishop g4 after queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, rook to e5. Now your pawn in a5 is weak. You also have these, these two pawn islands. And after a move like rook to, uh, rook to b1, targeting the pawn on b7, Black can now go knight c5, and maybe white is okay here in the long run, but it feels very, very scary with this weak pawn on d6. This knight is great on c5. It cannot be dislodged here. You don't have a pawn to put on b4, d4. And after a move like rook to d1, g6, followed by f5, king f7, and king to e6, it feels like black should probably be much better. Now, again, I don't know what the computer says here, but from a human perspective, it's very illogical to go into this endgame. As such, Hans chooses to take with the pawn here and double double his pawns on f2 and f3. 
Fabiano plays knight f8 logical move trying to prepare to capture the pawn on d6 additionally with the knight on f8 here it's very important to note the knight can go to either e6 or g6 here their ideas like knight e6 and knight g5 or ideas like knight g6 and knight to h4 both of which make a lot of sense so we get queen to b4 here guarding the pawn on d6 but also targeting the pawn on b7 rook to d7 is played by Fabiano now he prepares to play either rook e6 or rook d8 and win the pawn this past advanced pawn on d6 rook to d2 is played by Hans knight to g6 rook f d1 knight to h4 played by Fabiano very nice move here the knight can be permanently planted after g5 the knight can never be dislodged and black still is time to always go rook d8 or rook e6 and there are also ideas with moves like queen g6 and potentially a checkmate on g2 so Hans plays queen g4 Fabiano plays rook e6 here and now we get this king f1 move again very tough position to play it's it's very peculiar because computer actually likes a6 here which on first glance you think well why would you go a6 black and just take and if you try to capture with the bishop then you lose the pawn in f3 and with it you lose the game however after b takes a6 the computer now thinks that after queen to e4 or even potentially king f1 white is probably not all that much worse here which is interesting because it, when you look at the position optically it feels like white is close to lost instead he plays king f1 and now we get knight to f5 pawn to a6 pawn takes pawn bishop takes and rook takes d6 and the smoke is somewhat cleared here in that the position has become fairly simplified pieces are coming off the board and after rook takes knight takes black simply has one extra pawn here on c6 and when you combine that with the double pawns on f2 and f3 it feels like black should be much better maybe not winning but much much better here not just slightly better interestingly enough again the computer only says this is about 0.4 of an advantage for black even though if you ask any grandmaster about this position they would think that it's probably minus one or more and practically speaking it should be losing now to his credit here despite being down upon in a lot of in a lot of trouble Hans continues to play on and find some very good moves he plays Bishop to d3 here g6 logical by Fabiano to maybe move the King up also it stops any ideas of potentially back rank checkmates here because the King cannot go to h7 so we get h4 h5 Queen to g3 played here and now Fabiano plays this move King to g7 and we get this move e4 and again on first glance when you look at this position figure okay white has weak pawns these double pawns aren't very good on f2 f3 pawn and h4 in an end game could be a big problem because say say we reach some random end game just to illustrate the point um obviously these moves would never happen in the game but say you get to some end game for example just to illustrate it at some point black can probably play g5 here and create this past h pawn so in, in the end games it's very very scary because all these pawns are quite weak and these ideas like g5 to create the past h pawn um could end the game very quickly so here Fabiano plays queen to e7 a couple ideas one idea potentially to go rook f6 rook f4 and put a lot of pressure on the pawns on f3 and h4 additionally just maybe try to swing the queen over and go after the pawn on b2 so you get queen g5 queen b7 queen to c1 queen b4 played here queen d2 and now we get this interesting exchange of queens by Fabiano now it feels very logical to trade the queens but the only reason this is actually winning here interestingly enough for black is because of this move knight to b5 now again on first glance you think well white's pawns are very bad here but the problem is the extra black pawn is not all that great either this pawn on c6 can be easily targeted by rook c2 and you can't really push it forward if you go c5 rook c2 c4 i just take and if you go something like knight b7 now i can actually bring the bishop to c4 and and then put it on d5 and the bishop is very very powerful and white is white is almost better in fact at this point so black's extra pawn on c6 is not actually all that special so here Fabiano plays king f6 now again knight b5 would have been the best move but the reason Fabiano rejected this obviously was because of takes and something like rook d5 a6 and b4 and black has the extra pawn here in the end game but white's going to be able to go king g3 so just to illustrate white can always go king g3 long term just keep the king very close to these pawns and how does black really create an extra create the pass pawn here because e5 is weak b5 can't really be um you can't really go a5 here so it feels very difficult to make progress or to improve the position for black and Fabiano does not play knight b5 instead he goes king f6 trying to bring the king either to the queen side or to go g5 and create the pass h pawn we get b4 here played by Hans an excellent move idea to play rook a2 or rook c2 and go after either the pawn on c6 or the pawn on a7 so here Fabiano plays g5 rook to a2 is played now you don't really want to trade here because after trade 
The king is coming in very quickly to f4. The pawn is very fast, obviously. And additionally, what is the worst that can happen? If you play rook a2 and black takes, yes, black is up two pawns, but these pawns are not really all that scary. The double pawns on the h file. After something like rook a7, h3, even for example, I can go king g1 and king h2, or even bishop f1 and bishop takes h3. So it makes sense to potentially offer the swap of the h pawn for either the a7 pawn or the c6 pawn. You get knight c8, bishop to a6, knight to d6. And here Hans plays an, another excellent defensive move. He plays bishop e2. Now, the reason that Fabiano made this repetition is because by making this repetition of moves with knight c8, bishop a6, knight d6, we reach move number 40, which means it's time control, and both players get additional time. And as I said, here Hans plays bishop e2, an excellent move because the bishop on e2 is actually better placed than it would be on d3 because of the idea that we'll see in the next couple of moves. We get knight to c8 here and now f4. Now, it would have been interesting what Fabiano would have done after bishop a6. I suspect he probably would have played knight b6, rejecting a draw. Um, but after bishop e2, white still probably has very, very good drawing chances. And interestingly enough, the knight probably is better on d6 than it is on b6. So Hans used a lot of time to make this decision. Obviously, a very difficult decision to make. Um, but perhaps bishop a6 was very slightly better. Instead, he plays this move f4. We got pawn takes pawn, and now bishop takes h5. And the structure is very, very different now because what's happened is white is getting rid of the double pawns. Black is going to actually probably end up with double pawns, but black also has a pass h pawn here. And it's very difficult to assess whether this is, how good this is for black because also in end games, there are a couple things. Rook pawns in end games tend to lead to more draw situations as opposed to pawns that are in the center of the board or even the B or C files for that matter. So there probably are better drawing chances. Additionally, white structure after same move like E takes F4 here with moves like F3, white's pawn structure is actually very solid. And these pawns on F4 and H4 are potentially very, very weak here. So white's pawn structure goes from being really bad to being very, very good. So you get bishop takes h5, knight d6. As I said, probably it would have been better with the knight on b6. The knight on d6 does target the pawn on c4. And as we'll see later in the game, there are additional routings. Uh, I guess you can go to c4 from b6 as well. But there are maybe other routings that are available via b5. So we get knight d6. Rook takes a7 is played. Now it's worth noting pawn takes pawn would have been a mistake. Because after bishop g4, you have to go rook e8. And after moves like e5, king g5, I'm assuming you can take and play rook h7. And most likely, or rook takes a7, and most likely it should be a draw. Again, these pawns are not all that great on f4 and h4, and I, I doubt that black has, has anything special here. So we get knight d6. Rook takes a7 is played, pawn takes pawn, and now f3 is played. And as you'll note, black is still up a pawn here, but the extra pawn is a double f pawn. And additionally, this h pawn is very weak as well. So black's going to have to be very accurate to try and create something. So here, Fabiano plays rook to e5, bishop g4, and now the knight is free to move because the f7 pawn is no longer under attack. He goes knight to c4, and now we get this move king g2, which is a big mistake from Hans. In this position, what he should have played was actually this move rook a6. Now, very hard to be critical because it does look on first glance like after knight e3, king f2, takes, takes, rook takes e4, rook c6, king g5. You feel like black is probably winning here. It feels like black's going to win the pawn in g4 maybe the pawn on b4 as well but after this move rook c7 rook takes b4 rook takes f7 here we reach a classic end game with king g4 rook g7 where even though black has two extra pawns this is a theoretical draw with the f and h pawns now again i won't get into the details of that that's a very advanced concept but when black black or white has a pawns and c pawns or f pawns and h pawns if the white king is in front like it is here of the pawns this is a theoretical draw Hans plays king g2. Now, again, very understandable that optically it looked like it was losing. So he goes king g2. Rook b5 is played by Fabiano. An excellent move here because now you attack the pawn on b4. But much more importantly, you plan to put the knight on e5 where it's going to be a jumbo pony. It's going to guard the pawn on c6. It's going to guard the pawn on f7, all the while putting pressure on the pawn on f3 as well as the bishop on g4. And it can never really be dislodged from the square. So rook to a4 is played here by Hans. We get knight to e5 king to h3 king to g5 and now hans plays rook a8 rook takes b4 all all basically four moves rook to h8 played here and we get king f6 now this is perhaps a slight mistake computer wants king g6 don't ask me why exactly um now the reason that king f6 for us humans makes more sense 
is because now of king h4 you have the g6 square available to create the fork whereas after king g6 king takes h4 you don't have that available but apparently after rook b1 it's winning again don't ask me why so king to f6 is played by fabiano here and now we get rook to h5 with the idea of going rook to f5 checking the king and attacking the knight on e5 so here rook b5 is played rook to f5 king to e7 of course you don't want to go to e6 it walks into discoveries although there are, there aren't really many good discoveries but white can still just capture the pawn with check and it should be a drop so king e7 is played we get bishop h5 now here fabiano plays this very interesting move knight g6 now computer wants the very unusual king e6 move to be played here and after king h4 you just go c5 c4 run the pawn down the board again players low on time a lot of stress a lot of tension doesn't really feel very human to play like this so Fabiano plays knight g6 which is a much more straightforward attempt now it's worth noting also that Fabiano I believe at this point in the game he was down I know the clocks don't show the time correctly he was down something like 23 minutes to seven and by playing this knight g6 move it forces a rook and pawn end game where he's not gonna have a lot of tough decisions he's probably gonna have like two or three moves at most to look at in any given position so from a practical standpoint this is a very good decision Bishop takes g6 is played we get pawn takes pawn takes bishop rook takes f4 g5 rook to g4 is played now he goes king f6 trying to improve the king position and long term you still want to push the c pawn and now f4 is played by Hans now this is a big mistake here this actually loses the game on the spot um but it is a move that makes a lot of sense and I can't really again be very critical considering the situation now computer weirdly enough wants um I think it wants I don't know if rook g2 or rook g1 what the difference is let's just say rook g1 because that's the more human move um to stop something like say rook g2 you feel like maybe there's something like I don't know something like check and maybe the h pawn can run so to me it feels like rook g1 is more human move just to stop any nonsense with the rook getting behind because from the second rank there's never going to be a rook h2 check because I can just capture the rook so after rook g1 rook to c5 apparently after king g4 rook c2 f4 this is this is a draw but again doesn't really feel easy to play after takes h3 the rook is guarding the king can't get back and the c pawn is still going to be very fast going down the board so this is this is this is a draw with perfect play but not very human f4 however is very straightforward because it clarifies the situation immediately um since black is going to have to liquidate and trade some pawns so we get rook b3 check king h2 and Fabiano decides to go for the tickle with rook b2 now one of the things that we learn um at the more advanced levels and this is definitely something in the Russian school of chess in particular is that if there is a situation where you can repeat the position once you should repeat it once and then think Fabiano obviously did this for a couple of reasons first of all he wants to gain an extra minute on the clock by doing the quick tickle with check and going back to b3 so he gets the extra minute and then he can think also it potentially gives your opponent a sense of false hope that the game might end in a draw so it's also psychological as well now here oddly enough this move king to g I think king to g1 I don't know if it's king, I think king g1 here this this would have drawn the game for Hans because after pawn takes pawn here you go takes and after king e5 rook takes h4 if black plays c5 you can just very simply run the king all the way over and the king is on the back rank so black can't really prevent that and this would be a drawn rook and pawn end game after king g1 g takes f4 rook takes f4 I I'm not really sure what Hans saw here what what he was worried about maybe he thought there was rook b5 here but at any rate you can also play like e5 or I think even again just king h2 and maybe not maybe actually king h2 is a mistake but something like e5 and this should still be a draw at any rate Hans plays king h3 which also makes a lot of sense because you it feels like the safe move keep the king close to the h pawn but the problem with this move is that as we'll see in the game the king has trouble getting over to the c file whereas from g1 it would have been able to get over there right away it's also worth noting of course that if Fabiano had not tried to go for the quick repetition and gain time on the clock we could he still could have won the game here with g takes f4 however Hans misses this opportunity and now after check king h2 we do get g takes f4 rook takes f4 king e5 rook takes h4 rook to e3 and now here Fabiano plays this perfectly he does not make a single mistake in this end game and he converts it now if you look at this position if the king here was on g1 let me let me just make sure this if the king was on g1 here I'm pretty sure this would be a draw um actually yeah if the king was on g1 let me see if the king was on h1 actually is an interesting question let's say you get some position um where it's like this this maybe is still losing it's very hard to judge 
but it all depends on white's king placement because the way for white to draw this game here is to get the king over to the d file or the c file so after king g2 we got king takes e4 rook to d6 here now if white goes king to f2 trying to run the king over black can go king d3 and after king e1 king c2 this again will be a theoretical win so we get rook d6 pawns tries to cut the king off and bring his king over king to e3 is played which prevents white from going king f2 and if white goes king f1 here now i can just check and after king g2 c5 this would be winning as well so we get rook e6 king d2 check king c2 king f2 and white's king is getting over here eventually to um white's king eventually gets to the e1 square he's trying to get to d1 and maybe c1 but it's just a little bit too late with a black king on c3 here and after rook h2 we get king to d1 correctly Fabiano checks so now the king cannot get to c or the b file it's worth noting that in this end game if white could put the king magically on the short side here to where the pawn is versus the long side this would be a theoretical draw as we saw in a game between myself and Magnus in title Tuesday a couple weeks back however after king d1 rook h1 white's king is stuck on the long side here the, the side with more files versus the side with less files and now it's just straightforward we get king c2 rook to d2 king b3 rook d8 c3 check king c2 and after rook eight rook h7 Hans resigns because black can basically build a bridge if you play a move like rook c8 you go check king f2 king d2 check king c1 rook c8 c2 let's just say king f1 and now you put the rook on this fifth rank to start the process of building the bridge and after king f2 you go king d2 threatening to queen white checks you go king c3 white checks you go king d3 now if white tries to ignore it with a move like king f1 you can just go rook e4 and after king f2 you build the bridge with rook c4 and after check you go king c4 rook to c8 and now you build a bridge with rook c5 and you're just going to promote the pawn next move so hans ends up resigning after this rook h7 move a very very tough loss from a very long game both players had to exert a lot of energy in this game and i think it was what probably resulted in the fifth round today at any rate fabiano wins the game and he moves into the clear lead with three three points out of four two wins in a row as well as two draws in the first two games hans moves back to the middle of the pack with two out of four so let's move to today's game so in today's game the fifth round between lenier dominguez and hans neiman hans playing with the black pieces we get pawn to e4 hans plays e5 knight to f3 knight c6 bishop b5 and now knight to f6 the classic berlin defense now one thing that i will note about hans's play is it feels like ever since that first game against christopher Yu, or maybe actually second game against jeffrey jean he's been very passive his third round game against sam shanklin he was very defensive it felt like he was trying very hard to hold on felt much much like that in the fourth game against fabiano and today as well he immediately goes into the berlin end game i don't know if i actually like this approach from hans it seems like he's trying to be very very much like sort of trying to hang on for dear life to make draws in every game versus being aggressive the way it felt like he was in the Stingfield cup so i'm not sure if i agree with the strategy but we'll see we'll see if it works out so we get d4 knight d6 takes takes d takes e5 knight f5 we get the classic end game which of course was featured very prominently in the world championship match 20 years ago between gary kasparov and vladimir kramnik the challenger who did defeat gary and won the world championship title so we get h3 bishop d7 rook to d1 and now let's move bishop e7 again very standard theory nothing too crazy black has many setups you can go king c8 here you can go bishop e7 you can go h6 maybe even maybe not h5 in this exact position but many different setups hans chooses to play bishop e7 knight to c3 king to e8 and now we get this move g4 white tries to expand on the queen side one thing you'll notice about this position is that there are two issues that black has first issue he has double pawns in the end game which are not great secondly black cannot castle the king because you've already moved it to trade the queens on d8 on the other hand however black has the advantage of the of the bishop pair here so what white tries to do generally is he tries to expand in the center of the board where you have this classic four on three pawn majority and hopefully with the spatial advantage of the fact that black's king is stuck in the center you'll be able to get enough space where black will struggle to keep the bishops very active so we get king g2 here hans plays h5 and now we get f3 being played here um the idea behind h5 quite simple since black cannot castle the king either side probably you're going to put the king in the center like it's a bond cloud and maybe trade on g4 and try to open up the h file 
So you get pawn takes pawn. It's also worth noting that if you don't play h5, say you play a move like, I don't know, let's just say a5 here. White can maybe go f4. And now after a4, something like f5, white is going to go bishop f4. And this these pawns in the center are very, very menacing for white. So after h5, white has to go f3 to guard the pawn. And now you're never going to be able to go f4, f5, because later on, if you play f4, I just take and I win the pawn on g4 here. So after f3, h takes g4 is played, h takes g4, and now Hans plays this move f6. Now I know the computer does not like this decision from Hans. I do believe he's still playing this fairly quickly, so there's some reasonable chance it's preparation. Um, and Lenier, after a long think, plays this move bishop f4. Now the computer actually thought that after pawn takes and bishop f4 here, that white's probably quite a bit better here, but you have to be very careful how you assess these positions because after takes, takes, and bishop e6, white will win a pawn on c7, but the extra pawn he has are these these double isolated pawns on c3 and c2 and additionally it's opposite color bishops so to me it feels like white is probably better but i find it hard to believe this is anything substantial in the long run we get bishop f4 instead and now f5 is played by hans a very committal move here because now after g5 you're gonna have to prove that this bishop on h4 is not stuck stuck on the edge of the board the whole game additionally by playing f5 now your bishop has no scope either so an extremely committal move i don't know what the exact time the exact time situation was at this moment in the game um but i suspect that this was still preparation we get rook h5 now we get knight to e2 played by lenier king to e7 is played um it's worth noting if black plays bishop takes g5 here after this knight g3 move you would lose material if you move the rook you lose the bishop and if you take the bishop, you lose the rook. And here, after bishop e5, rook e1, it would very simply be game over. So after knight e2, we get king e7, rook to h1 played, rook h8, stacking the two rooks. Now black can maybe look to take at some moment. And here we get this move, rook h3. Now again, it's very for it's very easy for us humans to look at this with computer evaluations and reach certain conclusions. Now the move that should have been played was this move, bishop e3. And the reason I think on first glance is not very obvious because you figure, well, if black goes b6, what's the big deal? But oddly enough, after knight to f4 here, rook takes g5, king f1, black has to deal with a lot of issues. He has to deal with this move knight g2, attacking the rook and attacking the bishop. He also has to deal with moves like knight d5 check as well. And this position is actually pretty much winning for white. The only move black can play here, which doesn't instantly lose, is rook h6. But after knight g2, you're going to lose at least one of the rooks and maybe the bishop on h4 as well. Computer says after takes and rook g6, king f1, bishop g3, you can maybe, actually, maybe this is okay. Maybe I had this wrong. Sorry, after um, takes rook g6, white can go king h3, sorry, because if king f1, after bishop g3, f4, rook g4, black is probably okay. But after the very unnatural looking move, king to h3, white is probably winning, because if you go bishop g3, now after f4, rook g4, I can play rook a to g1, and material is going to fall. If you play bishop f4, I can trade and play rook g7. King e6, king g3, attacking the rook, and now there's rook h6 check to win the bishop on d7 as well. So this would have been very, very good for, for Lenny. Additionally, after bishop e3 here, if black plays this move, bishop takes g5. The whole situation is different because when we trade the rooks and you go knight g3 here, after bishop h3, knight h5, g6, knight f6, black is maybe, maybe okay here, but it feels very scary. Whereas in the game, after this move, rook h3 is played, Bishop takes g5. You're going to notice that the big difference here is that now after rook takes h5, now after rook takes uh, now after rook takes h5, rook takes h5. If white plays this move knight to g3 here, which is what hap which, which is what can happen potentially, after bishop takes f4, knight h5, now you lose this pawn on e5 here. So if the bishop was on e3, if we go back with this bishop bishop e3 move. It's completely different because when we get this position, there is no longer a pawn that is hanging on e5, whereas with the capture on f4, the pawn will hang on e5. So it's it's very, very nuanced move here to find bishop e3. I don't feel like it's very human unless you have a lot of time. Now, Lenny, I believe, was already getting a little bit low on time, so he played the more logical rook h3. But now after takes, 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 instead of knight g3, he plays this move rook h1, offering the exchange of the rooks to black takes. You can take the bishop with check in between and then capture the rook and win the game. But much like with the knight g3 variation here, black can now take on f4. And after rook h5, bishop takes e5. Black has two pawns for the two uh, bishop and two pawns for the rook. And no real weaknesses. The bishop on e5 guards g7 and c7. And black should be able to draw this without too much difficulty. 
So you get B3, C5, C4 here. Again, double pawns aren't great, but with these two pawns over here as well, and the bishop's able to guard, there are zero difficulties for Hans in this position. You get pawn to A5, king F2, A4, king E3, swap on B3 king to f6 here again in this position with the great bishop on e5 and black able to play uh let's just say black able to play a move like b6 at any moment the bishop and the pawns are all going to guard each other with this nice little cube and there, there's no danger at all we get rook h8 b6 played here again we do finally see the vaunted cube and white if white ever goes knight d5 you can just take potentially even b5 but even here if you just wait with this bishop guard guarding all the pawns and the bishop also targeting the pawn on f4 white has absolutely no chances to win the game so here we get rook g8 trying to prevent pawns from pushing the g pawn king f7 rook h8 king f6 rook g8 king f7 rook h8 king f6 and the game ends peace, peacefully in a draw between hans and lenny so a very stabilizing draw for Hans. Definitely disappointing for Lenier. I will be doing another recap, I think, of a couple of the juniors games. As I've said before, I feel like for Lenier, he's a little bit too cautious. It feels like he tries very hard to minimize the risks as much as possible. And when you do that too much, generally it kills the chances of imbalances and the chances of winning games. So for Lenny, if he wants to have a chance to win this tournament, he has to take some risk later on down later on the event and down the road. If he doesn't, I have a feeling it's going to be a very long event with a lot of draws for him where he'll be probably a couple of points out of contention from first place. At any rate, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap. I am hoping to do another recap of a couple of the very exciting games featuring some of the other prominent junior players from the United States later on. We'll see if I do that. At any rate, if you like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, and hit and I will be back very, very soon, you guys.